name is Black Elvis, super producer, Black Elvis, Elvis Williams. I produce Ego for Beyonce. I produce his for Fergie, Sierra, Usher, Mario, Gucci, Sean Garrett, everybody and anybody you can think about. I'm an executive in the music business. I got my own artist, have my own studio, have a whole team, and hey, we're pulling up on dope people. I'm Jamal Jones. I'm an independent music executive, an A&R, creative director, and a manager. I've worked with names like 112, Jagged Edge, Puff, Mary, Usher, Neo, Sierra. I manage Kerry Hilson. Yeah, PM, right? PM is a cat. He's uh, out of Macon, Georgia. We got a chance to work with him. Super dope, and we actually up here to do the uh, pull up, but he's doing a show over at SOBs with Jaque, so we're gonna stop over there. My name is Raphael Dwayne Ishman, aka Felly the Voice. You can call me Felly. I'm a writer from Gary, Indiana. I'm working on a few projects. Shantae Moore, Q Parker's solo project. We got some other stuff to do with Chris, Jari, PM, a bunch of projects I'm excited for. This kid goes ape shit, right? I'm talking about ham, crazy, and when he gets done, he walks off the stage and he's like, hey, are y'all ready for this PM? <laughs> this at the motherfucking sound check, dog. He performing at the sound check like a million people in the fucking building screaming his name. He said, y'all ready for PM? I know I was like, oh, this motherfucker's cold. I was like, yo. <laughs> You can't buy this type of entertainment. Nowhere. Like, he walks off the stage like he just dropped all his nuts down everybody's throat. And if I take a shot, I use a big gun. If I press a button, I'ma use my big thumb. See you haters hating, but you love my song. When the daylight comes, let your girl be gone. Cause if I shoot my shot, I use a big gun. He killed that. Joint. By the end of it, they're coming up to him like, yo, who are you? Let me get your contact info, like blah, blah, blah. They chopping up with people. What's up? I'm Josh Bush from Lexington, North Carolina. Former NFL player, Denver Broncos, won a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 50. Um, I'm a music producer, songwriter. All right, cool. <laughs> so Jim was not my idea. <laughs> I'm on camera losing weight. Things got to slow down for me because I'm losing my breath. I'm trying to sip water. I'm sweating right now just talking, so you can imagine how the shit went and looked in the motherfucking gym. So Josh got us in there doing push-ups in a whole circuit because he still thinks he's in the NFL. He already got a Super Bowl ring. We ain't even got no rings. I ain't even married. I ain't got no rings on my hand. I ain't gonna get no Super Bowl ring. Hey, Bush is a fucking Super Bowl champion. He's got, all right, he's on the motherfucking treadmill like this. The motherfucker run like this, that's serious. He's not playing around. His hands are like, like this. I'm like, JB, you're not in the league. We not in the league, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a football team to audition for tomorrow. Like, why are you busting my ass like this? My name's Anthony Smith, audio engineer. I work with Azzy Faye, Brian Leslie, K. Michelle, Rick Homie Kwan, Nelly. At this point, now we're, you know, we're all sitting at the round table. You know, we're trying to plan out the day. We're, you know, gathering thoughts. Everybody, you know, uh, I want to get their feedback on what they think about, you know, the artist, you know, what they think about, you know, what we need to produce. You know, I'm getting in with this kid notice today, and I want to create something. You know, high energy. He's a hip hop artist. He's different though. It's not like, you know, the trap, you know, thing that we used to. We got in Atlanta. We about to pull up on him. We about to go pull up on him at the marketplace, you know what I'm saying? In a minute. Huh? Initially, me seeing what he was, I was, my lights went off because I'm like, man, this is a kid from a whole different demographic. He's young, he's Lebanese and Indian, and that's a whole different part of the world that we can tap into. So I'm seeing the dollar signs rolling. I'm talking about there's a lot of people that look like him that need somebody to gravitate towards. So I thought it was really, really dope how he looked. So I was eager to meet him. We walked, it seemed like 20 miles. These motherfuckers is sprinting, pretty much. 
Now, Jay Bush, Super Bowl champion, okay? Nigga run like this. He don't really do the walking. You know what I'm saying? He don't like walking. I'm from the country, so when I was a kid, my grandmother would send us to the store, and it's, that seemed like it was 100 miles away. I don't like walking like that either, you know what I'm saying? But if we gotta walk, we gotta walk. But the way these motherfuckers was mobbing, oh my God. I was like, hey, hey, we already worked out today. Slow the fuck down. I'm sweating again. These are my studio clothes. I got sitting in this sweat and shit all day because these motherfuckers want to walk super fast, man. Slow down, man. Slow down. I'm tired just thinking about it. Yo, yo, we here at the Gotham West Market in New York City. We about to go grab a bite to eat. Pull up on my man Notice. Yo, let's go inside, check out what they got. Grab a bite to eat. Our first encounter with Notice was in Manhattan at Hell's Kitchen. We were meeting him there to grab a little lunch before the studio session. Instantly, I thought that he was different. You know, he's not black, he's not white, he's Lebanese and uh, Indian, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Give me Notice if I got it wrong. Off rip, I, you know, knew this kid was dope, period. And, you know, actually meeting him you know, it just kind of reconfirmed everything that I thought of and what I saw, you know, on his social media, on his IG. I mean, he's a really, really cool dude, humble, down to earth. He was so excited for the opportunity, which is great. You could tell he was hungry. You know, he's originally from D.C., you know, but he drove to New York to actually, you know, uh, meet with us. Just seeing his passion and love for the music, like, I'm already excited. You know, if you got the work ethic, that's half the battle. That's, that's half the battle right there. I'm looking up. How are we gonna get to the goddamn studio? We gotta take the train. It's either an $85 Uber or a $15 train. So I decided we was gonna take the train. Now, of course, all of us, you know, we used to ride in nice cars and all that stuff. But hey, I like to experience the culture wherever I am at. So at the end of the day, we didn't know what the hell was going on. You know, to the train right here? No, I'm taking the DC, but this is for the train. At this point, we're trying to figure out, well, how do we even get on the train? Try to go buy a train pass or a bus pass. What do we do? And where do we even buy this car? So lo and behold, here's this guy, like always, trying to hustle. Like, I got another car that's right. Uh, now you gotta take it. He had 20 bucks on it, and I gave it to me for 15. I didn't have no money on me. You know who gave me the money? My goddamn director, Devin. Somebody got a twenty. Devin had to give me fifteen bucks. I said, "Oh, fifteen bucks. He ain't gonna get the shit though. I tell you that much. <laughs> he gonna get a lot more money doing this goddamn show. Now I'm gonna be borrowing fifteen dollars from his ass in a minute." Josh don't want to get on the train. Elvis bougie ass still upstairs. We had to go back upstairs and get him and the other motherfucker from upstairs. Like, what are y'all doing up there? We get ready to get on the train. They trying to figure out if we can get in this Uber. And I'm like, that's because you got a lot of money. See, Elvis rich because he even got there, went and did all these goddamn productions. We know he did Ego. We know he did all this stuff with Beyonce and Sierra and all stuff like that. You got the money. I got my money, Elvis. I'm keeping my 85 dollars All eight of us are able to walk in. They get on the train. So. That subway experience is it's not for me. To be on the subway jam-packed with all those people, you know, people all in your personal space, that <laughs> that wasn't for me. JB gets into this whole panic, and he's like, "Man, see, I told y'all we should have took this. We should have took an Uber. It's so many people on here, and you know, JB is kind of uppity, so you know, he don't like to be around a crowd. You know, people people could look at us and tell that we wasn't from there." You know, I'd never ride the subway again, but it was a great experience. <laughs> oh, grand, grand, grand. So we get off the train in, in Brooklyn. We were headed to my, my homie studio, Dr. Genius, big time producer for Kid Cudi. We have to walk again, and I'm like, yo, I'll just call Uber, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can just call Uber, we don't have to keep walking. The studio is always a nerve-wracking thing because we never know what we're really walking into. My job is about to get in motion uh, because I, I have to set everybody up, got to get the keyboards prepared, got to make sure the vocal chain that I prefer is going to be used. 
So that's when uh, that's when the nerves kick in a little bit, but not all the way. I don't really get nervous per se, um, but I understand that at this point it's pressure and I have to perform my job without a hiccup that way. Everybody else can just stay in that creative space and don't have to worry about anything technically. Hello? Okay, so check this out. So, you know, we saw PM that night, and we was like, you know what? Why don't you come to the studio and come do a record with this kid? So you got the sustain pedal? Yeah, this is my backpack. Great studio. The engineer there, his name is Adam. You know, he's converse, conversing with Ant. You know, they talking like science shit, because that's what that technology shit sound like. You can put input 4372-696 into the input output, output dash nine, lower the volume, decimal 76.7. You can get the sound. Hey, look, bro, hey, look. What key is the song again, okay? That's what I'm trying to figure out, okay? I didn't ask you all that. Elvis is already playing the piano. He's doing this right here. That's not how he, how he really plays, but that's my interpretation. He's playing like this. You know, Al Jamal's stinking. That's not how he does it either, but that's my interpretation of what he does. Because he's dancing too, you know, because he's, you know, he's dancing. You know, Noah's walk in, and we do out there, and we chop it up. This song about to hit a million views on SoundCloud. And this is all recent, you know what I'm saying? It's all in the last six months. A million views on SoundCloud. In the last five days, that same song got 100,000 plays on Spotify, so I don't never try to step on toes or anything like that. I want my music to relate to everyone, not, you know, color or nothing like that. It's universal, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did a lot of footwork by myself. Like I said, like, a million plays, that's like no management. Like, I don't got no management, no um, promoters behind me. Like, all this is notice, you know what I'm saying? Like, notice pushing itself. Like, I didn't go and do it the whole school way and putting up stickers and passing out TVs, I didn't do any of that, but the power of the internet is crazy. You can be a huge international, you know what I'm saying, artist, you know what I'm saying, not just only, you don't have to just live in this, you know, the trap world, or you yeah. know what I'm saying, just the, you know, pop mainstream world, like, I see you as a big, you know what I'm saying, world international, you know, as an artist, you know what I mean? so much. And, and your music can live everywhere, so many different yeah. places, man, so. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, you know what I mean, we met here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here in New York, man, and you know, let's just go make history, bro. Hell yeah. I'm you know what I'm saying? Like that. I'm ready. That's what it is, man. This is always the fun part, because you got notice he's ready to get down, but he also brought his boys with him. So he's like, yo, can I bring my guys in? I'm like, hell yeah. But when you go down and go get them, tell them don't be scared. In comes a whole army of, you know, people, and I'm like, what? Yeah. It's like 10 motherfuckers coming to the studio. They, this is like the fucking, it's like a Latin kid, a black kid, you know, Italian kid, like a Russian kid. They, it's like just like the fucking United Nations up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy, you know? When you're working on something and you're working with people that you never worked with before, it's a little bit of anxiety, it's a little apprehension. You don't know what you're walking into. Same way we don't know what we're walking into, they don't know what they're walking into. But I had to assure them, let your boys know not to be scared. Oh, y'all don't want to do this! Oh, he's scared! Oh! What is that on the tail? Do you hear that? The whole night, Al Jeezy is walking around. There's this kid in the corner, and he's saying the whole whole night, like, see? You're a hater. He's hating. He's hating. He's hating. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? There's always going to be a hater in the room. So you had his man, if you notice, he's sitting in the corner and he's hating, he plotting. He's over there making jokes, he's doing all sorts of stuff. He's telling them like, you gonna be an old man, they over here about to make you look old, and whatever, so he was in the corner hating the whole time. So I see him hating. I already know he's hating, I see him hating. So I'm pointing at him like, look, look at him hating in the corner. Because I don't care, I will call you out, and I don't care. And it's always gonna be haters, but uh, Al Jeezy, he, he likes to lighten the mood up. You know, when he initially saw, you know, he came in the room, was like, oh, 
you know, he ain't ready. He ain't ready. <laughs> you know, everybody busts out laughing, but uh, that kind of just, you know, lightens the mood a little bit to take some of the negative energy out of the air, make it a little playful. Once we really go in, and then after that they respect it, it's like, okay, we did something right. We all know there was hate, but for me, it's so weird because I tend to just tune out everything when I'm working, when I'm producing, I'm in such a zone, like I see colors, I, I'm i seeing notes, I'm hearing melodies, so you really can't do anything to distract me. Like I'm just so zoned in and focused, like nothing really distracts me. So all of the tension and all of the guys talking and you know doing what they wanted to do and shooting the boo-boo and all that stuff, I just tune it right out. You can't be like, hey, can y'all be quiet so I can think? No. You have to find that happy medium and, that, and go to that place and zone out to where nothing distracts you. And you know, that's what I do. That's how I stay focused. And that's how I stay successful. Hey, hey, hey. Look at my wrist, oh, look at my neck. I'm oh, playing jeans, no, I'm oh, playing jazz. You buy swag, I don't like that. Oh, I'm playing jazz, ain't no play that. I GC to LA, and why on to the bank? I feel like I can go in any room. But that's me, that's Felly. I've been doing this for a little bit. Notice, he's in a room with fucking millionaires. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a room that most people get to visit every day. You know, so now he's creating in front of people who create for a living. It can be kind of nerve wracking, man. I, I would have to say I was proud of him. It's a, it's a testament to how dope he is as an artist. Hey, You gotta be dope, man. You gotta be dope. And if your shit ain't dope, motherfuckers will let you know, hey, that ain't it, dog. Damn, you'll be in the booth recording like this. All the while, niggas is in the, in the studio like, hey, this shit is trash, okay? Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy, okay? Whisper in somebody's ear, hey, listen, hey, you think we can change it to at? No, we can't change it to at, but I appreciate you contributing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't stop, don't that pussy, hey, let me see hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. Look at my wrist, oh, look at my neck. Off white jeans, no off white tag. No tag. You buy swag, I don't bite back. No like one way trips, ain't no fight back. Like GC2 LA, NYO to the bank. I just up in every stage. They text me and I erase. Like, ain't no pills, show me one, yeah. She laid down, it's DOA. Yeah, no life for movies, I'm really I run to the bag and I relay like, oh, shit, wait, shit, yeah. wait. I'm trying to face I'm trying like, to ooh, shit, he got cake, yeah. got cake, like, what's your name, no, no. ain't nobody fly, Yeah. Yo, 
Your last man was iffy, iffy. Fucking with me and be risky. I'm Philly the boys, man. We're working on this record for notice and uh, featuring people. It's called Gatorade. Let's work. Till about at least 4:35, we still got a fight to catch at 11. We gotta land, go straight to work. We're going in with Johnny Gill as soon as we land. So now at this point in time, it's just about getting as much sleep as you can, packing up, and getting the hell out of here. I felt like you know we came and we conquered, and you know we were able to you know produce two great records. PM show was amazing. Um, you know, we had a great time and everybody got a chance to bun. I got a chance to, you know, um, sit down with Notice and get to know him and, you know, got a chance to see PM in live action. So New York was amazing, incredible. You know, um, I don't want to go back anytime soon, but hey, I'm not opposed to it at this point. <laughs> so if you want me and my team to pull up on you, you gotta be dope.